Revealed Preference Theory Assumptions Part 1 This lesson is going to be published in two parts. First part deals with assumptions of the theory. In the competitive examinations, very often multiple choice questions are asked from the assumptions of Revealed Preference Theory. Hence this lesson. Already cardinal and ordinal utility theories derived the law of demand, making use of the concept utility. But Samuelson was not happy with those theories because they are subjective in their approach. Samuelson claims that his theory is objective and behavioristic in its approach. In developing revealed preference theory, Samuelson uses the price line as developed by J.R. Hicks, but dropped the concept utility. Consumer has a certain amount of money. He is going to buy goods X and Y. The prices of the two goods are given. If he spends his entire income on good Y, he can buy OA units. On the other hand, if he spends his entire income on good X, he can buy OB units. The line that joins A and B is called price line. There are so many combinations inside the triangle AOB and on the price line AB. Let us take a few combinations among them for our analysis. They are combinations Q, S, T, F, G and H. Using the price line, we shall try to understand the assumptions of the revealed preference theory. For the sake of convenience, we shall categorize the assumptions as explicit assumptions and the implicit assumptions. Explicit assumptions 1. This theory is based on the preference hypothesis. According to Samuelson, Consumer's choice reveals his preference. It is a single act of choice. Suppose the consumer chooses combination Q. That is his most preferred combination. After choosing, he will not revise his decision at any cost. It means three things to us. They are 1. By choosing Q, the consumer reveals his preference. 2. In his view, the chosen combination is superior and all other combinations are inferior to Q. 3. Again it means he rejects all other combinations in favor of Q. Second assumption. This theory is based on strong ordering. Consumer is capable of ranking all the available combinations according to his preference. He has a scale of preference and assigns a definite rank to available combinations as first, second, third and so on. This enables the consumer to make a choice with ease. Moreover, this assumption doesn't give any room for indifference on the part of the consumer while making a choice. Indifference among a few combinations means the consumer is unable to make a choice. Any combination among the available combinations is equally acceptable to the consumer. Such a thing is not there in revealed preference theory. Well, 3. This theory is based on consistency postulate. Accordingly, the consumer behaves consistently. There is no inconsistency in making his choice. Well, what do we mean by this? If combinations A and B are available in one instance, Consumer chooses combination A. It means he rejects combination B in favor of A. Okay. 
If the same combinations A and B are available in other occasions, the consumer must choose only combination A and not B at any cost. This is what we mean by consistency behavior on the part of the consumer. 4. This theory assumes preference is transitive. Well, what do we mean by this? We shall try to understand from a simple example. In the first instance, combination A and B are available. Consumer chooses combination A and rejects combination B. In the second instance, combination B and C are available. He chooses combination B and rejects combination C. Then, in the third instance, if A and C are available to the consumer, he must choose A. He rejects combination C because he has already rejected combination B in favor of A. In simple terms, it can be symbolically represented as A is greater than B and B is greater than C and so a is greater than C. Fifth assumption. It also assumes that income elasticity of demand is positive. Samuelson deduced his law of demand based on this important assumption. According to him, his law of demand will hold good only when there is positive relation between income and quantity demanded. Positive relation means when the income increases, demand goes up and when income falls, the demand also will fall. Then implicit assumptions. 6. The consumer is going to choose only one combination at a time from among the available combinations. 7. The consumer always chooses a combination on the price line. It means he prefers a combination that contains larger quantities of both the goods. Any combination inside the triangle contains smaller quantity of at least one good when compared with a combination on the price line. For example, take combinations Q and G. Q is on the price line, G is inside the price line. Q contains 5 units of good X and 4 units of good Y. G contains 3 units of good X and the same quantity of good Y. Q contains larger quantity of at least one good, so the consumer will not choose any combination that lies within the triangle. Well, our discussion ends here. We shall meet in part 2.